And uh, again, um, always appreciate this opportunity to talk about uh, you know, just the different benefits that are available for our area veterans, and uh, you just give them information that they may not be aware is out there. Absolutely. I mean, that's what this is all about, and that's what the you know Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs, and as far as the state level goes and the county level goes with each county, I have a great partnership working with our county veteran service officers for veterans to have that one place to go and learn about all their benefits for them, for their de dependents on the federal level as well as the state level. And, you know, our main goal here is to have some great topics to spurn people's interest. But mainly, we want you to know if you live in Indiana, you live in a county, and that county has a county veteran service officer, and that person is in place there. To it's a fellow veteran, and they are there to help you understand all the benefits that are out there, state and federal wise. And you know, we always encourage people to go. You never know what's out there, and far more times than not, people leave eligible and and applying for benefits that they didn't even know were there. I think that's definitely the most important thing about the Veteran Service Office is that you, first off, you may not be aware of any of the benefits that are available. But then it's also, once you go in, start a conversation, you might be looking into, say, burial benefits, something like that. The veteran service officer can cue you into several other things that might be available for you. Absolutely, and that's what's so important. I mean, it's great to go on the Internet um, and look at VA.gov and other places and learn about some benefits. But really, that individual um, aspect to it is, is only going to happen when you sit down one-on-one -on -one with your service officer. And they're there to help. They're there to know, and they're trained to ask some questions and kind of find out where we can slip through the... Uh, slip through the web of benefits and really see some things like you said that are you never knew were there but it's it's available to you and you're only going to find that out by sitting down and having that conversation and here on the local level of course we are always happy to hang out with Jefferson County's veteran service officer Faith Weir uh, Faith just wrapped up in the month of September a very busy time for the veteran service office as they got ready for that stand down they did it was a, it was a great event I was honored to be there and play some music for I was in your role I was DJing hey, how about for that? the event it was really great um, the turnout was was really really good um, I don't know the exact number but we had veterans throughout the gym the entire afternoon um, I know our our vendor turnout was really well so they were providing services there um, and one of the services was haircuts and it was interesting because it was the it was uh, some of the folks from our prison here in town from the ladies correctional facility up uh, at the old state hospital at grounds area and they were doing haircuts and of uh, uh, being prompted for people to tell me to get my haircut, which I, I resisted for the moment. We started talking, and it, you know, you're always learning in town, and and it's events and conversations where you learn. And I didn't even know that they were had a shop that was open to the public, so folks can go up there and get uh, uh, haircuts, and some of them are free, some of them are very well discounted. I think it depends on certain situations. I'm not sure, but that was interesting to know. And uh, one of the other things I wanted to hit on real quick was. Uh, a big thank you to the American Legion post that is at the Women's Correctional Facility. Um, pretty sure it is the first all-female post in the state of Indiana, and we have quite a few uh, female veterans that are residing at that location at the moment. And uh, a few years back, we worked together to help build a post up there, so it's really wonderful that they have it, um, and they come and they help at events like the stand down. They had did um, helped with setup and a bunch of other things, and they're also impar they also do a lot of great help at the cemetery. So when Alan and the folks at the State Veterans Cemetery, right across the road from where they're at, do different events um, throughout the years, they're always there to help with parking, setup, and all those things. So it's really great to have them around. We'll go ahead and hit on a couple of other local things uh, you know related to our veterans. I know um, you mentioned the Indian Veterans Memorial Cemetery. One of the cool things. I've seen recently with the cemetery, I guess it wasn't too long ago that an unclaimed veteran was buried in the cemetery, and so just knowing that we have that here in our state and see all the different people that come out to support people, um, it's a touching moment when we see those send-offs. It sure is, and it, there's been a few um, unclaimed folks and, and, other, and other veterans from throughout anywhere in the state. Um, Alan is there, and, and you know that facility is beautiful. For yes. folks who haven't been there, just take a walk through and see what they have, see what they've done. Um, the building is beautiful. Um, all the whole setup, you know, where the graves are. I know it's just they put tireless amount of hours in there. They're a pretty small crew up there, and those guys work really hard. 
and maintaining it. Um, I know we, through IDVA, um, got a grant not too long ago to reposition the stones. So the headstones up there are under the same guidelines as federal headstones and I'm not sure what the reasoning or how it works but the rule is they don't have concrete bases so they're kind of set mm -hmm. and as you know ground settles rain and all that and they kind of get to different levels and they got a grant to go and have them re-leveled up so I know they were seeking out contractors and bids to, to kind of re-level them they're all straight as an arrow as far as the angles and stuff it's really interesting when you go up there and walk and see the rows and, and, and the hard work those guys put in. Absolutely. I know another one on the local level, um, you know, people are always looking at ways they can give back to veterans in our community and one of the easiest ways to do that is uh, by driving the DAV van. That is so true. Um, you know, we have our Jefferson County Veterans Council here, um, which you know, it's, it's, it's a group of folks that are from all different veterans organizations throughout the county and their main goal is just to help raise awareness, funds, and, and do other deeds for veterans right here in the county. And one of their main goals for many years has been operating the Disabled American Veterans Van, which helps veterans get to transpor transportation to their VA medical appointments. And for the longest time, the way the funding was, the way the drivers were, and the way the program worked, because the DAV partners with the VA and then other community organizations to kind of make that 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 process work so for a long time they would basically they were kind of checking into the new albany clinic and then the robley rex va medical center and throughout the last few years we've got clinics now in Carrollton, kentucky we also have one in scottsburg but logistically it's hard to get the van to go in multiple directions with multiple veterans so we've kind of been hemmed into having veterans go to the New Albany Clinic if they needed to use the van. And I know locally the RSVP folks have um, put their van up for use as well. And we've got some other programs working with the Jefferson County Veterans Council and Faith's diligent work down at the County Service Office to where I think we are transporting to Scottsburg, to Carrollton and New Albany and Robley Rex. So we've really in the last year they've worked really hard um, I know uh, Faith's worked real hard with the council, Alan Manning, Robin Henderson, those guys put in tireless hours, not only driving, but setting up and going to the meetings and making things happen. So like you said, it, it's a great way to give back because the one thing they always always seeking are drivers, people to get in that van um, and head out with some veterans and get them to the appointments they need to get to. And uh, you know, for anybody out there who's got a little bit of time and they want to give back to our veterans, I mean, this is the very best way to directly give back to our veterans right here in our community is to help out with that van process and if you want to do that you can give faith a call at the service office it's 812-265-3600 and she will get you set right up with uh, Dave Adams who is our um, he runs the van coordinator for the uh, council and another guy who puts in a lot of effort and a lot of work making sure all those guys get their right. Joe, uh, another topic we were going to hit on uh, transitioning now. Talk about some stuff on the local level. I'm uh, going to transition to some stuff involving uh, federal level. Correct? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, and you know, I wanted to discuss some, uh, some, some newer things coming up with VA health care. Uh, there, there's, uh, there's been a lot of tweaking to the VA healthcare administration and it kind of always is as it expands and grows but um, what we want to see is you know the VA is really encouraging um, any and all veterans you served in the military they want you to enroll in VA healthcare now there's eight different priority groups in VA healthcare with the, uh, the eighth one being sometimes their veterans wind up in a situation where they're not actually seen by VA healthcare but the VA, as well as I do, encourage everybody to enroll. Um, no matter where you might wind up, even if you have some health insurance, maybe through a business or through family on the outside, you feel like you don't really need any health insurance from the VA, you're good to go where you're at, I encourage you to go and enroll anyway. And then there's a couple ways to enroll. You can go see your county veteran service officer, for sure. And here in Jefferson County, that's Faith Weir. She's at 315 Jefferson Street right across uh, from the courthouse, right across the street from the courthouse on Jefferson. They can also go to va.gov and uh, follow the health care button and then go to the enroll. They can enroll right online. There's also a phone number on there as well. You can call and enroll that way. And now, uh, you know, the reason we want to encourage veterans to enroll is A, they might find out that there's something worthwhile for them to use with VA. 
And where we really see that with veterans who have outside health care, who are fine with their health care, but the benefit to enrolling in VA is they can get their prescriptions filled through VA. And that's really a big thing for some folks. Some of these prescriptions are real high dollar, and they're not through the VA. And the VA is more than willing, as long as a veteran goes to a, twice a year to their clinic, gets some blood work, and does a, hey, how's it going to their doctor, the VA is more than willing to work with their other doctors. So as long as they go to a, a civilian doctor on the outside with some private insurance, as long as the information is shared, and if that civilian doctor writes them a prescription, that's maybe going to be a high dollar prescription for them. The VA will review it and then fill that prescription through the VA health care system, which can be a whole lot less expensive for those veterans. So that's something that we really want to encourage them to look at and get enrolled in VA health care. Certainly. And uh, like you said, if you have any questions uh, getting that off the ground, that's what the Veterans Service Office is here for. Absolutely. And that, that's what we're doing right now. Me and you, we're, we're peppering the wall with different information and ideas so that somebody out there might go, huh, I need to maybe ask about that. And that's what you need to do is go see that service officer. And while you're there, you're going to find out about a whole bunch of other things as well. And of course, when we talk about these benefits through the VA, um, this isn't the sort of thing that, you know, only available to veterans of certain wars. This is, you know, anybody that has served is absolutely for this. yeah I mean you look at the federal VA and all the benefits available and we also have a wonderful set of benefits here for our Hoosier veterans right here in the state of Indiana so two different systems two different sets of benefits and and really it runs the gamut of what's available to each veteran um, we know we got National Guard folks out there I think Indiana has the third largest National Guard of all the states. So we have a lot of National Guard folks here in previous National Guard. We've got reserves. We've got folks who are retired. We've got folks who just did four years and got out. There's a the whole plethora of fellas and ladies out there who served in wartime. Some served overseas. Some did not serve overseas. Some served during a quote-unquote wartime period. Some served during peacetime. But there are benefits for the whole gamut of veterans out there and really going to see that service officer is the way you find out what's available to you. Uh, Joe, we just got done talking about um, you know, prescription prescription program available for our area of veterans you know, to get them filled through the VA. Um, another thing that veterans have available to them you know, is tracking down records. Yeah, and that, you know, their DD-214 is your discharge papers when you get out of the military. Um, it's, it's the most important document you have, and there's quite a few folks who don't have it. I'm not sure where it was. It got lost over years, um, and it's hard to track down for some folks, but we can help them find that. Um, once again, VA.gov has got a great link to that. I'll keep referring to VA.gov because probably over the last five or six months, they changed, they actually upgraded the website again, and it's really become very user friendly and kind of easy to navigate where it maybe wasn't in the past. So I encourage folks to check it out if you're a little web savvy. You can find some information out there. But uh, we have the National Personnel Records Center in St. Louis, Missouri, and that's where everybody's records go. Um, and so if you want to obtain not only your DD 214 discharge records, you can also request from them and obtain all of your service treatment records, all of your medical records from when you're in the military, as well as your, all of your um, whole other records jacket from the military. So you can get it. everything that you did in the military, all of your paperwork, all of your records are available, and they'll supply those to the veteran. And uh, that's at archives.gov would be their website. You can link to it at va.gov. You can do an online application. You fill out some things. You fax in your signature, and they'll send you all you got. Um, there's a standard form we use for that. Uh, Faith at the Jefferson County Veterans Service Office can definitely help veterans put that in, send it in and get those records. And um, you know, another thing that's really great that they do at the National Personnel Records Center for not only veterans but for surviving spouses and surviving members of veterans who we don't have with us anymore is they will do a one-time replacement of all the medals that a veteran received while they were in the military so it's a great thing for I know a lot of folks like to put together a, a shadow box or a box with the medals and stuff for their sometimes their uh, veterans passed on or even veterans who are still with us um, they will replace all of those for free one time for any veteran so it's a really wonderful program that they have and you can send off to them and they'll send you that along with the records so we want to encourage folks to do that and get those medals and and display them that's funny i was actually just getting ready to ask you about that uh, my family's been talking about 
tracking down the you know the records and the medals for my grandpa was a, a veteran of the Second World War and Vietnam, and that's you know he wasn't he never fought on the front lines, but he was part of the war effort. So just wanted to see what was available for him out there. So we were actually just looking into that. All right. Well, and you know you can call Faith and uh, you guys can go down there and see her and keep doing that research. But yeah, they, they will do that replacement. It's a great program for our for um, you know family, especially families of a deceased veteran who are trying to gather some information. It's a great way to kind of look at their look at their records, see what they did, and see their medals, and kind of you know be proud of who that veteran was. Absolutely. Uh, as we work our way towards the end of the program, is there anything else you want to hit on? I do definitely want to kind of poke at another thing that we've talked about in the past recently that I think is important to stay on top of. Um, we've talked before about service-connected disabilities, and those are, you know, a disease, a disability, or a disorder that a veteran currently has that uh, was caused by their military service. So when we when we help a veteran file those claims, the, the big part of the claim is to help the veteran show or prove to the VA that this current disability was caused by their service. Sometimes that's an easier task and sometimes that's a harder task. Um, but your service officer is there to help you understand that process and, and build those claims. But in, in that program of service-connected disabilities, the VA does have what they call presumptive disorders. And those are based on exposures that veterans had during the military. So if a veteran was in the, in the military during a time and a place where they were exposed to something, chemically or otherwise, um, they now have lists of diseases and disorders that are associated with that exposure. So that whole cause part, that nexus of saying, hey, what I have now was caused by my service is presumed by the VA. It doesn't have to be proven. One of the, one of the most commonly known is Agent Orange. So veterans who were exposed to Agent Orange during the Vietnam War, there's a whole list of disability diseases and disorders associated with that, like type 2 diabetes, ischemic heart disease, prostate cancer, lung cancer, are a few of the many that are associated with that. So if a veteran has that now, and they were boots on the ground in Vietnam, the VA will presume that connection and they will get a claim. Um, and it's been a trick in the past for many years for what we call blue water navy, blue water sailors. Um, it, traditionally, up until very recently, to get those presumptive disorders, you needed to be boots on the ground in Vietnam or served in an inland waterway of Vietnam, which we called brown water sailors. But they've read the Congress has recently opened up blue water sailors within 12 miles off the coast of Vietnam uh, to be able to go in under after these presumptive disorders. A lot of fellas and ladies from back in the day have filed for it and been denied. Uh, some folks were just knew they couldn't get it because it wasn't available to them being in the Navy and off, off the coast and didn't file. So what we really want is let those, those folks go and file right now. Give Faith a call. Give the county service officer wherever you are a call. And if you were in the Navy during Vietnam and you were anywhere even close to Vietnam, get in, file your claim. We'll let the VA sort it out. If, if you were on a ship or in a distance um, within that spot, we really don't need you to have that exact information. Let's get the claim filed. They have all the ship logs. They have all the information there. Let's get that in there. But we want those folks to get in there and file those claims. And the other, the other quick thing I wanted to hit on was um, with our Vietnam era and Vietnam War veterans um, ages and other issues going on now, we're, we're starting to see a, an uptick in the widows and surviving spouses of our Vietnam veterans. And there's potentially um, a benefit called dependency indemnity compensation. That's a wonderful benefit for the surviving spouse of a veteran. And a lot of the, there's a lot of Vietnam veteran spouses, surviving spouses out there that have this benefit available to them or don't know it and aren't using it. So if you are or you know of a, of a surviving spouse of a veteran who served in Vietnam, worth a few minutes to go see your county service officer chat about things, bring some paperwork if you have it. If not, she'll help you find it. And we can see if maybe there's uh, this benefit or other benefits are available. You know, we're learning all the time, you know, about the impact of different things. I know, you know, PTSD was initially very well understood. As you said, initially we started with just Agent, Agent Orange boots on the ground, but then we got into blue water. So the information really is changing all the time. So that's why 
another it, reason why it's important to stay up with your veteran absolutely. service officer. Yeah, and, and really for the veterans who are receiving benefits, you've been in, you've been in to see Faith, maybe you came to see me in the past in Jefferson County, maybe it's been since Dick Jones, one of our great service officers in the past who I was um, lucky enough to learn from and take over from when I was doing that job. Um, you need to go back. It's a check-in period. You know, I say every year check in with your service officer if you are receiving benefits and see what tweaks maybe could be made, see if something has changed. When it comes to VA and the benefits, even if you're receiving a benefit, maybe something changes with you and your condition or maybe something changes with the actual benefit, it will not affect a veteran unless they go and file for it. So you could be service connected for a condition. You could use VA health care exclusively. VA health care can know that condition has gotten way worse. Well, it's not going to change on your claim until you file. So we want you to go back and check in. And, and on those exposures, too, just so folks know, those presumptive disorders, that also counts for what we call our, our Camp Lejeune uh, veterans, a lot of Marines and other services who may have been stationed in Camp Lejeune for a 40-year period were exposed to contaminated water. So those claims are available not only for veterans, but family members who lived on base. And we also have our um, uh, burn pit. We have exposures from burn pits, and there's uh, almost every area of service has an exposure now. So it's, once again, go see that service officer and see what you can do. No. We always enjoy our opportunity to meet up with you each month, uh, have a chance to reach out to our veterans. Uh, Joe DeVito, as always, uh, thank you so much for coming on the program.